All right, we're going to talk about the atomic number and isotopes. Um, on the periodic table, you might see a lot of things that are confusing to you. Um, but I'm going to help you go through the periodic table and tell you what exactly it is that you're looking at. Um, so here is the element of that you might see uh, chlorine on the periodic table. And I just kind of blew it up for you so we can talk about what these numbers mean. So chlorine is its chemical name. It might not have it on your periodic table. It really depends on what periodic table you're looking at. But that's the official chemical name. Uh, that number 17 will be on there also, and that indicates the atomic number. And in this case, well, not in this case, it always is the number of protons in that particular element is the number 17. So chlorine has 17 protons. Um, Cl is a chemical symbol, or the, you know, how we, we see it maybe in a, in a chemical formula or something like that, um, a way to make it shorter. So it, one thing I see a lot that students do is instead of making it a lowercase l, the second one, kids a lot of times just keep them both capital letters. This is completely incorrect. To me, as a chemist, when I see Cl like that, I see one element C and the second element L. When I, when I know that you meant C little l. So anytime you have a chemical symbol that has two letters in it, not all of them have two letters, but if they have two letters in it, make sure that the second letter is lowercase. The last thing that you might see on the periodic table that's important right now would be this, this number 35.453. What does that mean? That's the average atomic mass. Um, that's measured in atomic mass units. Um, what gives an element or an atom mass? Well, the number of neutrons in an element and the number of protons. That gives an element mass. Neutrons and protons, you're like, I don't really understand because this is a, this is a decimal, but we know that neutrons are 1 AMU and protons are also 1 AMU, so why is this a uh, decimal? Well, this is the average atomic mass. And <clears throat> what that means is, well, We'll actually talk about what that means and how we calculate that and what that actually entails in just a second. Okay, so these things are actually going to change. The subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons are going to change. Um, if the number of protons changes within, its, within the atom, you're actually going to change the identity of that particular atom. So in this case, we're talking about chlorine, um, which has, we said, 17 uh, protons. If you add a proton, making it 18, you're actually going to change the identity of that element, making it argon. Um, if you have... <coughs> If you lose a proton and you make it have 16 protons, you're actually going to change it and it's now going to be sulfur. So this actually gives the atom its identity. This does not change. Uh, if you change the number of electrons, all you're changing is the charge or the, or the, or the, um, the, electric, the electrical conductivity, not conductivity, but the electrical charge of that particular element. So let's say uh, chlorine, if we wanted to note that it's neutral, we're just going to say Cl with nothing on it. If we're going to say, okay, it's going to gain an electron, we're now going to change, make it Cl minus. It gained an electron, meaning that it has one more negatively charged particle than it does positively charged particle. Um, we'd call these guys ions. They're charged particles. Um, <clears throat> and the ions can be positively charged or negatively charged, depending on if we gain or lose electrons within an element. Um, if we change the number of neutrons, we're going to call those guys isotopes. That's when an atom has the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Now, the chemical uh, reactivity and the chemical properties of, of isotopes are pretty much identical. Um, they don't change that much at all when you gain, when you gain or lose neutrons. Um, it might change when talking about radioactivity or something along those lines, which we'll get into, um, which is another whole topic amongst itself. But uh, pretty much the chemical reactivity or the chemical properties are identical. So how do we denote when something is an isotope? Well, there are two ways to denote it. Um, we can either have the symbol with the mass number behind it, this is a mass number, the number of protons plus neutrons. Um, so in this case, 35 is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons equals 35. So in this case, we know chlorine has 17 protons. That's always a given. And we have x number of neutrons. In this case, it'll be 18 neutrons. For chlorine 37, we know that the 17 protons plus x number of neutrons equals 37. In this case, we have 20 neutrons. These guys are isotopes of each other, meaning they have different number of neutrons. Another way to symbolize isotopes, you might see it looking like this with a dash and the mass number behind it, or you might see something looking like this. This, these guys are the mass number, and these guys just reiterate the fact that chlorine has 17 protons. This is the atomic number, or the, yeah. Um, so all of this basically describes the atomic number isotopes and kind of helps you differentiate or decipher what exactly you're looking at when you're looking at the periodic table.